So, hello everyone. And um, so my talk today is about um, the role of uh, a gene called MIB in uh, adenoid cystic carcinoma, all right? So I work in Brunel University in London. And uh, yeah, my name is Arturo Sala. So just very brief presentation of my uh, research. So my group is mainly interested in rare diseases, so rare cancers, but also rare genetic diseases. And we have three main line of investigation in my, <clears throat> in my lab. One is um, the first line of research is on Friedrich ataxia, that is a rare neurodegenerative disease. The second line of research is on neuroblastoma, that is a, um, a rare form of cancer affecting children and originating uh, in the nervous system. And the third line of investigation is on adenoid cystic carcinoma, which is the subject of my talk today. And uh, let's go to the next one. So just a brief introduction uh, to uh, adenoid cystic carcinoma, or ACC for short. Um, so adenoid cystic carcinoma is a malignant cancer that uh, originates from exocrine glands. Exocrine glands are uh, glands that uh, secrete uh, the product outside the body or in body ca cavities. And the main gland affected by uh, ACC is our salivary glands, but also other type of exocrine glands, in, for example, the breast. Um, on the right, there is a cartoon depicting the different elements of uh, a salivary gland, and especially the different cell types found in a salivary gland. For example, we have acinous cells, myoepithelial cells, and ductal cells. And the cell of origin of ACC is usually myoepithelial or duct ductal cells. In this um, uh, figure, I'm showing some tumor sections of uh, different types of ACC. So ACC comes in three flavors called cribriform, tubular, and solid. Now, as you can see, uh, the cribriform and tubular type of ACC uh, is um, more likely uh, um, resemble the normal salivary gland. So the architecture of the gland is, is mainly preserved, right? Whereas the solid, type of ACC is completely undifferentiated. And this makes a difference in terms of outcome of the disease. So the cribriform and tubula uh, type of ACC are more benign compared to uh, the solid uh, ACC that is a little more aggressive. So we all know that there is no standard systemic chemotherapy for ACC. Uh, ACC is a slow growing tumor, uh, but almost, uh, you know, uh, ironically, being a slow-growing tumor responds re less to chemo uh, radiotherapy, uh, and it, it is relentless in its growth. So slow growth, but relentless. So resistance to chemotherapy and radiotherapy is a major, indeed a major problem in ACC, and that's the reason why we're here doing research on this cancer, because there is still need to, to understand how can we um, you know, sensitize ACC uh, tumors to treatments. About half of, of the cancers are metastatic. And um, unfortunately, uh, metastatic ACC um, leads to death, usually within five years. And um, as an example, I've uh, you know, illustrated here uh, survivor curves from um, ACC of the lungs. Um, Operable groups do much better compared to the non-operable group. And uh, clearly, this is, uh, reflects the fact that uh, the non-operable group are metastatic. So ACC is a rare tumor. Um, and there are about 2,500 cases in Europe every year. However, the socioeconomic impact is high because it, it strikes people still in their working age, relatively young people, and also for reasons that are still not totally clear, um, affects more women than men. Now, uh, talking about the molecular alterations found in ACC, the most striking uh, alteration is um, the mutation of a family of genes called MIB. MIB are genes that are conserved from plants to insects to humans. 
So clearly, they must have a, an important function in cellular physiology. Um, the genes, the MIP genes, encode for transcription factors. Transcription factors are gene, um, proteins that are important for the regulation of gene expression. And in humans, there are three uh, forms of MIP uh, called CMIP, AMIP, and BMIP. There are even MIB uh, genes found in, in viruses, in particular, in the so-called retroviral uh, retroviruses that can infect birds. And in birds, these retroviruses carrying this MIB viral form of MIB cause leukemia. So although there are no viruses that infect humans and cause leukemia, we know that from these studies on birds that MIB have at least the potential to cause transformation and cause tumorigenesis. So finding alteration of MIB in human cells suggests that this could be a main a driver of, of, of the cancer. And this leads to the discovery made by the group of Goran Stenman in uh, Gothenburg, Sweden, in 2009. So uh, in 2009, the Stenman group published a, a major breakthrough study in which he identified, for the first time, a chromosomal translocation uh, leading to the mutation of the CMIP gene. Chromosomal translocation is essentially a change in the DNA of these cells that leads to alteration of the MIB oncogene. This is a figure taken from uh, the Stanman paper in which uh, it showed that uh, MIB, the gene MIB located in chromosome 6, uh, is fused to another uh, gene called NFIB uh, located in chromosome 9. So this chromosomal fusion leads to the formation of a chimeric gene called MIB-NFIB in ACC patients. Now, this fusion not only results in the uh, formation of this chimeric gene, MIB-NFIB, but also in the activation of the normal version of MIB. This study was very important, clearly, but there were still open questions, and in particular, whether activation of MIB or MIB-NFIB cause directly ACC, can these two uh, potential oncogenes transform human gland cells? And is there any difference uh, between the two oncoproteins in terms of transforming potential? So these are questions that we, some time ago, tried to answer uh, via a study that was um, funded by char the US charity ACCRF. And uh, so my team um, joined the Stenman group um, in this uh, study. And the conclusion of the study was that, so what we found in this study is that both MIB and MIB and FIB can transform gland cells in vitro. And also we have identified a gene downstream of MIB and MIB and FIB called ATR, which encodes a kinase that is um, potentially a therapeutic target in, uh, in ACC. And in the next few slides, I'll try to illustrate this, uh, the results. In this uh, experiment, we um, overexpressed MIB, or two different MIB and FIB forms found in patients, and uh, expressed in uh, uh, normal gland cells. And both MIB and MIB and FIB were able to induce uh, the growth of these um, organoids, so-called organoids, in uh, semi-solid medium, suggesting that MIB and MIB and FIB were oncogenic, at least in this in vitro assays. You can see the, the growth of these organoids compared to a, a control. When we analyze the gene expression patterns emanating uh, downstream of MIB or MIB and FIB, we found that both MIB and MIB and FIB were able to regulate a common set of genes involved in the cell cycle in cell division and DNA repair. And we were particularly intrigued by the observation that MIB and MIB and FIB were able to activate a gene called ATR. ATR encodes for a protein kinase. The protein kinase is a uh, enzyme that is able to add phosphate group to other protein. 
okay? And doing so regulates um, um, signaling pathways in the cell, okay? And ATR, in concert with another kinase called ATM, uh, is particularly interesting because um, it is downstream of uh, DNA damage. So it's a sensor of DNA damage in the cell. Chromosomal rearrangement, like those found in, in ACC tumors, in principle should lead to a stress, okay? And this stress should in turn induce a program cell death or apoptosis. So in, in the face of this DNA damage imposed by these chromosomal changes, the cancer cells should, should actually die by apoptosis. But clearly, this is not the case. The cell survives, actually. Uh, ACC cells grow uh, and form a tumor. So why is that? The reason uh, our hypothesis is that in, as a consequence of the translocation is this activation of MIB factors, like MIB and MIB and FIB. And by activating MIB and MIB and FIB, the cancer can survive because MIB and MIB and FIB in turn activate these uh, kinases, for example, ATR, ATM, or another one called BAB1, which I will explain a little bit later in, in my talk. Now, these kinases can antagonize cell death, promote cancer cell proliferation, and probably also uh, induce drug and radiation resistance, all right? So, the easy answer would be, let's block MIB or MIB and FIB using a drug, and this should restore program cell death, and we should be able to cure the cancer. Unfortunately, this is not possible because the transcription factor MIB is currently undruggable, meaning that there are no small molecule inhibitors, there are no drugs validated in the clinic that we can use to address this MIB activation in ACC. However, uh, as our study has indicated, there are kinases downstream of MIB, such as ATR or BAB1, for which there are drugs already developed and already in the clinic that we might use to treat ACC. Some time ago, we initiated a, 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 a experiments to see whether we can use uh, these drugs to treat ACC. So we have looked at the expression of ATR and MIB in patient samples, okay? And found that ATR and MIB uh, are co-expressed, which is what we want to, to know in terms of, for example, if we need to treat patients, are they expressing ATR, are expressing MIB? So we, we could use both MIB or and ATR as a um, biomarker for you know, uh, leading um, treatments. So we knew that there were some small molecule inhibitors already in the clinic um, for other cancers. And so we identified a compound called VX970, also known as M6620, that is already in, in uh, phase one and phase two trials for solid tumors, in a number of trials for solid tumors, all right? So we used that compound, and we interrogated a cell line derived from a patient uh, in an in, a in vivo experiment. So essentially, we have taken this, this um, patient-derived tumor, allowed it to grow in a mouse, and then treated the mouse with a VX compound, and found that um, the compound was uh, inhibiting in a significant manner the growth of this patient tumor in, in a mouse, okay? And of course, the tumor was positive to our target ATR. So the conclusion of this part of the talk is that MIB and MIB and FIB can both transform human gland cells and induce common gene expression patterns, and ATR, is a MIB and MIB and FIB target gene that could potentially serve as a therapeutic target in ACC. And the good news is that a couple of clinical studies were published recently suggesting that the VX compound is safe and is effective in uh, as, both as monotherapy or in combination with uh, chemotherapeutic drugs in patients with advanced solid tumors, non-ACC tumors, but other types of solid tumors. So potentially, it could be used to 
treat ACC um, patients as well. So how are we bringing this research forward? Um, we, and this, this is actually a project that has been funded by the Oracle Cancer Trust. So we are validating another um, MIB-regulated kinase identified in our study called BAB1 as a further therapeutic target in ACC. So uh, BAB1, BAB1 is a kinase that is involved in a phase of the cell cycle. So this is a cell cycle, meaning the cell that is replicating its DNA and dividing through uh, undergoing a series of, of, of phases. And BAB1 is involved in uh, the so-called M phases or mitosis. During mitosis, uh, the cell divides. And in the absence of BAB1, clearly there is a problem. And especially the problem is in the absence of BAB1 is for cancer cells compared to normal cells. Because cancer cells are replicating much faster than normal cells. So again, we can, we, we think that there is a therapeutic opportunity by targeting BAB1 in cancer. So we went on by assessing the expression of MIB and BAB1 in several tumors. And we found that, again, MIB expression and BAB1 expression were parallel in, in, in many tumors, including SECs, suggesting that BAB1 and MIB expression is linked. But so we wanted to ask, uh, you know, the questions. First of all, is MIB or MIB NFIB required for BAB1 expression in ACC cells? And second question, is BAB1 a direct MIB target gene? Now, answering this question is important for clinical decisions because they suggest that MIB-positive ACC tumors are likely to respond to a, a drug targeting BAB1. And of course, the most important question we wanted to answer to is that whether we can slow down the growth of MIB-positive ACC cells using an inhibitor of the BAB1 kinase. Okay, first of all, for the first question, we used um, small molecule inhibitors called small interfering RNAs to uh, downregulate the expression of MIB or MIB and FIB in a, in a patient cell line called ACCX11. Now, these small molecule inhibitors unfortunately cannot be used in patients, but they can be used in, uh, in, um, in, in, in in vitro experiments, yeah? So downregulating MIB or MIB and FIB using these uh, small molecule inhibitors, we also see a corresponding downregulation of the BAB1 kinase expression. So this suggests that MIB uh, expression and BAB1 expression is causally linked. But is this regulation direct? So in, on, in order to answer to these questions, we have inspected the promoter of BAB1. Now, the promoter is a piece of DNA that is important for the regulation of the expression of the gene. And in this piece of DNA, we found several MIB binding sites. That is, little stretches of DNA uh, where, D, where MIB can bind to. In order to understand whether MIB was actually directly regulating uh, the BAB1 gene, we uh, operated the mutation of all the MIB binding sites in the BAB1 promoter, and then assessed the activity of the promoter in the presence or absence of MIB, and in the presence or absence of the mutations. We have carried out so-called luciferous assays, in which we have looked at the expression of the BAB1 promoter in the presence of MIB, and as you can see by the, the bar, huge bar, means that the promoter was strongly activated by MIB, whereas this activation was lost when uh, the MIB binding sites were mutated, suggesting that MIB activates the BAB1 gene but only when the MIB binding sites are intact, suggesting that there is a direct interaction between MIB and BAB1 at the gene level. But what about you know, uh, the role of BAB1 in terms of proliferation of um, ACC cells? So we have used 
an inhibitor developed by Bayer called Bay181. And we have used this inhibitor in, um, in vitro uh, against a SCC cell line, I mean, patient-derived cell line called SCCX11. And the compound is highly effective in slowing down the proliferation of the cell line, but is not uh, as efficient in slowing down uh, a control cell line, so a gland cell line called MCF10A. So again, this suggests that there is a therapeutic window that we can exploit using uh, this compound, which affects, uh, strongly affects the ACC cell line, but not the normal cell line. But uh, is the compound able to actually kill uh, the, cancers, um, the cancer cell line? And the answer is yes. So even low concentrations of, of the compound can induce apoptosis or programmed cell death, uh, suggesting, again, that at least in principle, the drug could have a therapeutic value in, uh, in ACC patients. So to conclude, uh, BAB1 is a direct MIB target gene in ACC cells. The Bay inhibitor slows down and, and, and uh, induces apoptosis of a, an ACC cell line in vitro. And we predict that combinations of the ATR and BAB1 inhibitors should sensitize SCC cells to maybe chemotherapy, radiotherapy, hopefully giving uh, more you know, uh, opportunities to patients that are clearly in need of new uh, treatments. And yes, we need to team up with clinicians interested in bringing these studies into clinical trials, maybe, so maybe. I found one <laughs> today, <laughs> all right? Okay, and finally, let me uh, thank the people involved in, in this study. First of all, Elenia Cicero, who is uh, the Oracle Cancer Trust funded PhD student that worked mainly on the BAB1 um, uh, project. And then Giovanna and Gabriele, who were former postdocs working on the ATR project. And of course, the essential collaborators uh, the Swedish group led by Goran Stenman and uh, Nicole Spardi and Jeff Kaufman from SCCRF and the funding from Oracle and uh, SCCRF. And I'm happy to take questions if you have any. Thank you. Thank you very much.